I want to talk about being passionate for God. It's the next, passionate for God. Passion is different than emotion. Emotions go up and down. Passion is constant. I get too many times we are emotional for God. And we get emotional, and we have an emotional experience, and it dries out a few days later. God wants us to be passionate for Him. Emotion will be included in the passion, but emotion doesn't, doesn't always include passion. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about being passionate for God. Mark 12, 28. Uh, then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? This is the New King James. And Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the definition of being passionate. Loving with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's passion. That is a biblical definition for passion. We think of passion as being as a force of pushing forward, or, or passion is, is being excited about something. That can all be included in passion, but the definition of passion is going after something with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To be passionate for God, I have to love Him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's the first commandment which, which God gave. It's the greatest commandment uh, which, which God great, gave. Uh, the, the, from the, since the Old Testament, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. And, and Jesus repeated it. And they said, yes, you, you repeat, it, repeat it well because God wants his people to be a passionate people. He's not looking for us to serve him halfway. He's not looking for a, a, a service which, which, which uh, lacks passion. God is not looking for a lukewarm church. A church which serves him because I got to go to church today. Or, oh, well, it's, it's time. I, I don't know, but the, the lake looks pretty good today. And the lake does look good for some days. Uh, and I'm not against vacation. I'm not talking against vacation. But what I'm talking about is that we have too many things that makes our service to God lukewarm. In Revelation 3, God was sickened by the lack of passion in the church of Laodicea. In Revelation 3.15, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I have traveled five weeks, as long as I've been out in a single time in the, in the, in the U.S. in 34 years. I've been in all kinds of churches. It's been a very interesting church. I've been an independent, Foursquare, Church of God, Presbyterian, Methodist. I was, I've, I've been with the, the Gatekeepers movement. I have, uh, I have been in Pentecostal churches. I have been in all this. This describes the average state of the American church today. And it makes me sad. God looks at people without passion and he says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. God wants us to be a passionate people. Then what are some signs of a passionate people? I will go fast because I'm used to. I'm used to Teaching people are going to work the next day. So you give a lot of points very quick. So if you're writing them down, write them down. I'm going to give nine points. <laughs> I'm not going to spend a long time on them. Number one, passionate people are doers. James 1.22 says, But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. How many people here can right now draw a picture of your face? You know why we can't? Because we have a false image of ourselves. 
That's exactly what we do. We look at ourselves and we don't see ourselves how we are. We look, see ourselves how we want to see ourselves. He forgets how he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not for, uh, forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one is blessed in what he does. Passionate people are doers. They're active in the things of God. They're not just talkers, they're doers. So many times we have people who, who can say to us, what you are and what you do speaks to me so loudly I can't hear a single word you're saying. Because we can talk a good talk, but we must live the walk. We must live the life which God has put before us. We must be doers of the word. When the Bible says, love your neighbor, we must love our neighbor. When it says, to forgive those who have wrongly used you, we must forgive those who have wrongly used, used us. When the Bible says, to seek God with all our heart, we must seek God with all our heart. We are doers of the word. We, we are the people who are putting the, um, the rubber to the road on the gospel. The people who see us will see what we do. You say, well, what you do is, 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 is a works-based ministry, a works-based faith. I'm not talking about a works-based Christianity, but your Christianity will be proven by your works and by what you do and how closely you live the Word of God. And passionate people are doers. They work hard for the service of God. They don't get tired in doing His will and doing His vision in their life. I take the church in Monclova as, as an example. As I said, the pastor, he's a, he's a general director of, of, a, of a large company. And, and the, there's 12 couples on the pastoral staff there. And they all have, have businesses or, or, or high up or, um, uh, executives and companies. And I see them, and, and, they, and, and they take time off of work. They even risk their, their jobs sometimes to be doing things in the work of God. And you see them bring their families, and their families are with them as they minister in the afternoons and the evenings. And they bring their children along with them. They don't leave them behind. And, and they're doing, and they're constantly doing, and, and they're living what they, what they believe. And when the people see that, they say, you're a true Christian. Because they're doers of the word. They give, um, they feed 2,800 kids a, a, a month food, five meals a, a week, in three different centers. All this when they're holding down jobs. They're teaching the word in homes and in small groups, and they're out ministering. Because they're doers. A person who is passionate will work hard in the things of God and will include their family with them. They're not lazy. Passionate people are, don't complain about extra work. They don't have syrup in their veins or they walk so slowly that you wonder if they can even move. They're always turned on and fighting to see that passion completed in their life. Number two, passionate people get up early. Psalm 63, 1. I'm not trying to step on any toes here. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Passionate person wakes up every day with a passion to serve God. In various places, we have men's prayer at 5 o'clock in the morning. Why at 5 o'clock in the morning? Because they have to be at work by 6.30 or 7 in the morning. And you got 150 men out to pray. I get up. I start my, my devotion at 5 o'clock every morning because I can't stay in bed while they're getting up. You've got to... A passionate person will get up early because they want to live their passion. They're anxious to start the day because they're passionate about what they're doing. I'm passionate about Jesus Christ. I'm passionate about what he's going to do today. Every day I wake up with an expectancy to see a miracle of God. To see what he's going to do. We have to get up early to do that. If we we're always sleeping in, always sleeping in. I'm not talking about sleeping in every now and again uh, against that, but what I'm saying, if we're always just sleeping late and, and getting up just to 
get dressed and, and drink a cup of coffee and run, run to the office. That's not passion. It's a delight to get up every morning with the passion of being used by God. We're also passionate about His Word. We start the day with His Word. I have our church reading once a year the Bible. So our, all of our pastoral care people have to read the Bible twice a year. And so if they read it twice a year, I have to read through the Bible every 90 days. And then I've got a, a through the Bible uh, once, a, once a year with a group which I'm doing with them. So I'm reading through the Bible five times a year. I'm not saying this to brag. It's not a brag thing. But the thing is, if we want to install passion in our people, the people around us, we have to be passionate about the Word of God. Psalm 119, it's not there. It's not there, so don't look for it. Psalm 119, says, Your word is a lamp and unto my feet and light into my path. All Psalm 119 talks about a passion for the word of God. I've got to start my day with the word and with prayer. With the word and with prayer. Oh, it's a sacrifice at first. But you'll get to the point where even if you go to bed at one o'clock in the morning, you wake up early. i got to get in the word. I want to sleep a little bit. No, I'm going to get in the word. If I have to take a nap in the afternoon, I'll take a nap in the afternoon. But i got to get in the word. Amen? Number three, passionate people are brave. Psalm 118.6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? We work in cartel areas. I know what it's like to have a bag put over my head and driven two hours to go and see people who don't want to be found to give them the word of God. And then a bag put back on your head and driven two hours away. You say, oh, those are neat adventures. I can tell you, when you have the bag on your head, it's not a neat adventure. <laughs> I can tell you that. It's not a neat adventure. I am actually in the midst of writing a book called Things They Never Taught Me in Bible School. And that was one thing they never taught me in Bible school. <laughs> but anyways, uh, when you're passionate for God, you lose fear. Because the, the passion is a love. And perfect love casts out all fear. And then I have the courage to, to confront anything which I have to confront in my life. We confront many things. We live in anxiety and depression because we have not learned to live with a passion. And we're afraid to confront our anxieties and our depressions because we don't want to pay the price of living with a passion. God wants us to live with a passion. The more passion I have for God, the less fear I have of the challenges which life throws at me. Too many people look for security in, in earthly things. They look for security in their pensions. And I'm telling you right now, or, or secure jobs, I'm telling you right now, pensions and secure jobs are not a problem. It's good to have. But a time is coming upon America and it's coming soon when the foundations of this nation shall be shaken. Because God has said, it's time is enough. And things which you thought were secure will not be secure anymore. Jobs which you thought were secure will not be secure anymore. And you shall see violence which you never thought could happen upon this nation. And you shall see civil unrest which you thought would never happen upon the nation. But in the midst of all this, the church shall arise because the church will learn to depend on God. And in the midst of all this, because the church has a passion, they shall arise and say, I am not afraid. I'm not afraid what man can do to me. But if I look for security in earthly things, I'll never have a passion for God and for the life he has for me. My security is in Jesus Christ. Number four, passionate people are positive. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Passionate people. Uh, people who are passionate for God do not live 
complaining about present problems and difficulties. They're always looking towards a future which has promise. I've heard missionaries up here, I've heard ministers up here that are going through a tough time and they say, but I can see something which is coming down the road. I can see something which is coming down the road. I'm here today because there were missionaries before me who saw something coming down the road and they may not have even lived to see it, but they saw it coming down the road. And I'm seeing it today. They don't complain about present problems and difficulties. They're always looking for a future with, with a promising hope and what God has for them. Passionate people occupy until Jesus comes for them or until Jesus comes. Every, th every time they're knocked down, they look at that as a teaching of how to have a better future and have more success in the future. They have a teaching of how to get back up because they're passionate. Passionate people do not stay down. Philippians 4.12 says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We talk about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but we forget what comes before. I know how to be abased and abound and how to be hungry. Oh, I can't be hungry. That's not God's blessing. Yes, I know how to be hungry and I know how to be full. And I say, must say I am full because I had a good meal. <laughs> but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I have a passion for God, nothing can keep me down. Number five, passion, passion people seek excellence. Not that I have already attained a Philippians 3.12 or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay a hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. When I am passionate for Jesus, I will always seek the perfection of God. I haven't made it there. I'm going towards a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. But I'm going towards perfection. A passionate person doesn't say, well, nobody's perfect. The passionate person doesn't say that. I'm going towards perfection. Passionate people never do things uh, uh, for now. That's good enough for now. You know that everything which is done for now will never get done? Did you know that? You go to factories, you go to a business, you do something for now, you'll go bankrupt. Passionate people do things right and try to do things right the first time and get them done right. They don't stop until it's finished. And they don't say, it's hot outside, well, let's just leave it for now. No, they finish what they do. If I'm passionate about Jesus Christ, I start a Bible study, I start with a family and say, oh, this, this, I got things to do this week, I'm going to call them and tell them that I'm not going to go this week, we'll do it next week. No! I finish what I start because I'm passionate about Jesus Christ. I extend myself, I, I, I do the, the labor, I, I fight, I work hard so that I give my best for God. I do not give leftovers to God. I give my best to God. And so when I give my best to God, he, he grows even more in me and I in him. The person who is passionate about Jesus Christ never stops growing in God. Number six, passionate people are joyful. First Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I can tell you examples of a pastor's wife who, who, was, who was abducted and she was raped, finally raped by three men and they left her for dead and she came back and she learned how to forgive the people who raped her. And the whole ministry has started from that, uh, a rape recovery ministry and a sexual abuse recovery ministry. And how she says, I thank God for what happened because it brought me out of my stupor because I was lukewarm in Jesus. But the thing which taught me to rejoice was well before that. I was 18. I was up on, that, on the church up the hill. I was going to school here in San Antonio. And one of my best friends, Danny Vela, passed away. Tragically. 
He was 18 too. Tremendous witness for, for Jesus Christ. And I watched at the end of the, of the funeral uh, service, his parents came forward to close the, the, the case. I, this stuck with me. This is one of the things which impacted my life. This is one of the things which has helped me do 72 funerals of people under 30 before I, I did a funeral of somebody who died of natural causes. And they held their hands and they raised them, their hands and said, Lord, we thank you for these 18 years which you gave us, Danny. They didn't say, why did you take them? They said, we thank you for these 18 years. And now, Lord, we give them back to you because in your hands it's better. But we thank you for these 18 years that you gave them to us. I think 20-some young people from his high school came to Lord in his funeral. But I saw them thank God in the funeral of their youngest son. Passionate people are always joyful. And even in sorrow, they find joy and they're thankful. A passionate person can be sad for the night, but they know that joy comes in the morning. The joy of the Lord never leaves us. Even in tragedy, we're full of joy because we're passionate. Number seven, passionate people. Now, this is one of the hardest ones. Passionate people re receive instruction and direction. Galatians 1.18 so this is, you say, this is kind of strange. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, this is Paul talking, and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none other of the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now, why is it important that he mentioned James, the Lord's brother? Because passionate people seek to be pastored. Because they know it's necessary to have the, direction, the external direction to channel more effectively their passion. James, if we go biblical, and we, I can take you through this, I'm not going to take the time. James was Paul's pastor. The first human leader of the, of, the, of the first church was James. It was not Peter. Tradition says it was Peter. But you go to Acts 15, and when they had the first council of, 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 the, of the first council of the church, and they were trying to decide whether the Gentiles had to follow the law of Moses or not, and had to be circumcised or not. It was James who gave the answer. And James says, this is what I decide. They always went to James. Paul, an apostle, submitted to a pastor. We all need a pastor, as we see that Paul needed a pastor. Even pastors need pastors. I submit myself to a pastoral council. And we see that when you submit yourself to a pastor and you work hand in hand with a passionate pastor, that passion is um, channeled. It's a fire in your bones. Jeremiah said, it's a fire in my bones, I can't keep quiet. It's a fire in your bones. But fire is productive and it's destructive. In Monclova, they, they, it's a, they have huge steel foundries. They have several miles of steel foundries. They have got six main um, ordinals, what we call them in English, um, kilns, uh, for, 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 the steel, for the production of steel. If you've been in there, and I've seen them, that fire is thousands of degrees. And it's centered on that kiln. And that is what is needed to make the steel. Fire which is channeled is productive. Fire which is let loose is destructive. A wildfire destroys everything. So if I have passion, I have a fire. But if I'm not pastored, that becomes a wildfire. So a passionate person will let themselves be pastored to channel that passion to a productive ministry. Number eight, passionate people keep their eyes on the goal. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Passionate people keep their, go their eyes on the goal. They don't take their eyes off the goal. They never leave. They never go on side, side roads. It doesn't matter the obstacles. 
It doesn't matter the opposition. It doesn't matter what is in front of them. Passionate people go forward because their eyes are on the goal. They live with the same theme which Paul lived when he says in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, becoming conformed to his death. That's the World English Bible. Or it says in the, in the Net Bible, my aim is to know him, to experience the power of his resurrection and to share in his sufferings and be like him in his death. My goal is to be like Jesus. My goal is to know Jesus. Just saying to know God is deeper than you can imagine. Brother Martin has written, I don't know how many books about knowing God. I don't even know if you're finished. Know God is our goal. And passionate people, they keep their eyes on the goal. They always keep their eyes on the goal. And number nine, passionate people love. First John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He do, who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest towards us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be propitiation for our sins. The first passionate person was God himself. He loved us first before we loved him. And when I'm passionate for God, his love flows through me. It's not my love flowing to him. It's his love flowing through me. And then when his love flows through me, I begin to know God. The eighth point, the goal. My goal is knowing God. The passion. And God knows me. Remember in Acts, when the seven sons of Siva tried to cast out the demon, out of the demon-possessed man? And he said, Paul I know, out of Jesus I know, Paul I know who he is. But who are you? To be known by God, you have to know God. You have to be passionate for God. You have to love God. Passionate people love deeply. Passionate people love people. Passionate people love the call of God in their life. They don't complain about their life. Passionate people don't complain about their life. They love the call of God in their life. Passionate people love the life which God has given them. Now, you don't know the life which I've got. No, I thank God for the life I've got. Because this life is just preparation for eternal life. That's all it is. I love the job which I have because God gave it to me. So I can be passionate about my job. I love God's presence because his presence makes me passionate. God has called his church to be passionate. And too often we have lived in lukewarmness. As I said, there's a time of trouble coming upon the nation. But in this time of trouble, God has called the church to be a light. Lukewarm churches do not give light. God has called this church to be a strong light. You won't have people come in by twos or threes and people coming in. I've been gone five weeks. They have uh, baptized 26 people since I've been gone. 26 people in the San Pedro church. The other churches, I can't say how many they've baptized. Because these are new converts coming in. These are not church transfers. As the church goes out and lives its passion and is passionate and our ministers, wherever they are, the people come streaming in because they will see you, they will hear you, they'll be impacted by you. People are looking something to be passionate for. Why are people passionate for evil? Because unfortunately, sometimes evil is the only passion they see. They must see the passion for Jesus Christ and that can only be seen through us. I just pray that God, let us be passionate for you. May God bless you.